Welcome, Adam's Faithful. I'm happy to have taken on the large task of finding every significant reference I could to as many countries as possible in the Fallout series. This will not cover every single country, and the list of countries that are represented in the Fallout series can be seen here, as well as in the video description. If you do not see your country, I am sorry, but Fallout has not mentioned you in any substantial way yet. That means that, yes, my beloved Denmark is not mentioned. We are Malkilere. This is a long video, so let's get this thing started. What better way to kick off this list than the country with the second most lore in the whole series, China. Due to the pivotal role that China plays in the series, it is no surprise that there is quite a bit of information regarding this country. That said, we don't know a lot of information about what life was like in China either, before or after the Great War, as is the case for almost every country on this list. We don't know if the relationship between China and the rest of the world was parallel to real-world history, although this is likely the case, up to a certain point. It wasn't until the 21st century that China became a threat to the United States both militarily and economically. This tense relationship grew as the oil fields of the Middle East ran dry and China's reliance on fossil fuels drove it to become more aggressive in creating energy security. Although the European powers engaged in armed conflict with the Middle Eastern countries in what became known as the Resource Wars, China's own involvement in the conflict is not known, likely meaning that they had very little to do with either side of the conflict. Chinese society was hit by shortages due to resource scarcity and a lottery-type system was implemented to try to ration resources in a fair way. This was, however, rigged in favor of those that showed the most loyalty to the government. The government was comprised of a single party, the Chinese Communist Party, and led by the chairman of the party. Lore is split on who was the leader of China during the time of open hostilities, with Fallout 2 mentioning President Xin, while later games referring to Chairman Cheng being the leader. Some trade between the United States and China is confirmed by the presence of items like the imported Chinese Panda plush and the Comrade Chubs, which I have a hard time believing would sell well in the US, but I guess not, because it can be found. Interestingly, China's embassy in the US remained active during hostilities between the two countries, and Xiu Ling was the last ambassador to the United States. China was active in espionage efforts, particularly against the United States, who was their ideological rival, and one of the only powers that could stay their hand at securing their energy future by force. These espionage and sabotage efforts included the so-called Niagara Sabotage, which is never explained in clear terms, but likely had to do with sabotaging the power-generating facilities around that area that supply New York State with a large amount of power. One of these Chinese agents, known as Wan Yang, was implicated in the Niagara Sabotage and later wound up in the Turtle Dove Detention Camp in Point Lookout, where she was interrogated. This interrogation led to her death, but the player character in Point Lookout can successfully complete the mission that she left behind. This includes destroying a beached mini Chinese submarine that was found and in the process of being recovered by US forces before the Great War ended that operation prematurely. Van Buren would have pinned the release of the new plague virus on Chinese agents trying to steal and inadvertently releasing the virus in the United States, which would make it one of the highest profile instances of Chinese cloak and dagger operations in the US, but Bethesda has yet to confirm this outside of a reference to the blue flu, which is one of the names included in the Van Buren design documents, and Chinese stealth suits being found in the Hoover Dam in Fallout New Vegas that would have belonged to the agents that attempted to steal the virus. This would have been referred to as the Hoover Sabotage and executed by the Haigwai Special Infiltration Units. We do not know the extent of the Haigwai operations, but we do know that they were enough of a threat that the United States made a counter-espionage unit specifically tasked with hunting them down. Unfortunately, we don't know much more than that, other than there was a group known as the Crimson Dragoons that could be encountered in the Operation Anchorage DLC. Other than fighting American forces and using the most advanced stealth suits China had at their disposal, all other information comes from the Operation Anchorage simulation, which has a very spotty record when it comes to the truth. China was also developing a fleet of stealth submarines that seems to have borrowed and expanded upon Chinese stealth technology. This fleet was rumored to have been completed by 2075, but none of the Chinese submarines that are encountered so far in the series purport to be one of these stealth submarines. Not even the large submarine, the Yangtze, that can be found in Fallout 4. China was also mentioned to have tried to develop their own power armor to counter the successful American units, but could not get them to work, and refocused efforts on their stealth tech. 
China did hold an edge in some areas though, specifically with their Type 93 assault rifles being superior to the American R91 rifles. Chinese military doctrine also emphasized tanks, which helped them quickly take ground in Alaska, but began to be effectively countered by power armor later in the war. China operated businesses within the United States that acted as fronts for their espionage efforts. Mama Dolce's is the best example and has a location in the capital wasteland and Appalachia. The building in the capital region is still filled with Chinese remnant soldiers, who have been able to survive due to their ghoulification. A radio transmission is detectable near this location called the People's Republic of America Radio, where anti-American propaganda is playing at the time of Fallout 3 in the year of 2277, and presumably has been playing the entire time since the Great War. The loyal soldiers remain in the facility and are hostile toward intruders, protecting what was likely a key location for supporting espionage efforts in the surrounding areas. In Appalachia, a large functioning base known as Fuginia Intelligence Base was constructed beneath a Mama Dolce's food processing building. The base's primary mission, when it was built, was called Operation Trinitite and was focused on identifying American nuclear silos and so-called factory cities while infiltrating Appalachian production centers. Xi, the station chief, saw to the operations, which included recovering encrypted U.S. launch codes and investigating a heavily automated area known as Watoga, where U.S. technology could be harvested. However, they were unable to fully decrypt the launch codes and after some time had to abandon their goals at Watoga because of the large threat imposed by the automated security there, which was beyond their ability to counter with limited resources and manpower. The facility shifted goals, establishing several laboratories including one dedicated to furthering stealth technology and robotics in 2076. The work on stealth technology was significantly hindered by their inability to get advanced parts from their homeland as well as finding them and stealing them in the US. That, coupled with the difficulties of properly testing prototypes in a hostile and foreign country, led the stealth technology team to produce nothing of real value, although they were close to creating more efficient stealth suits. The robotics team, on the other hand, made progress in redesigning the Liberator robots that were seen to be useful should an invasion of the contiguous United States take place. Upgraded with better lasers and bladed weapons, the Mark V versions could be made easily with the production capabilities of the facility and deployed through disguised smokestacks. When the Great War occurred, no one at the facility was made aware and Chief Xi abandoned the facility, ordering the men to blend into the population to preserve their own lives. The game confirms several places that harbored Chinese agents or sympathizers, in addition to all the locations previously mentioned. Pre-war Pittsburgh appears to have housed such an agent with an unmarked location called the Abandoned Apartments, where a radio signal can be found repeating a Morse code message, in addition to finding the Hat of the People that is a unique Chinese commando hat. In the Capital Wasteland, under Old Olney is a sub-basement that houses the dead bodies of two Chinese spies, along with several weapons, ammo, and a radio. What they were trying to accomplish is not clear. The character, Irving Chung, in Fallout 3 resides in Tenpenny Tower and claims to be a direct descendant of Chairman Chung. He insists on calling everyone comrade and plans on turning Tenpenny Tower into a commune, although this connection is likely all in the mind of a fanciful old man. The presence of Chinese agents is obvious, even so many years after the Great War, as the number of Chinese weapons that can be found and are still in use by wastelanders can attest to. With the ratcheting of tensions between the United States and China, exacerbated by the energy crisis and China's espionage efforts, a new Red Scare gripped the United States, resulting in rampant paranoia, detainment camps, and racial discrimination. At one point, China attempted to tap into an offshore oil reserve, only to have the attempt sabotaged and make the entire effort completely ineffectual. This was blamed on the United States, and while there's no evidence one way or the other, they are the most likely candidate. With temperatures between the United States and China higher than ever, China invaded Alaska in 2066. The US had placed military units in Alaska in anticipation of this event, but China was able to make considerable progress in taking portions of Alaska. This battle would rage on, with China ceding ground to the Americans over time, largely due to the American T-45 power armor. In 2074, while the war in Alaska was still being fought, the United States decided to invade mainland China under Operation Yangtze. This invasion occurred in or around Shanghai and expanded from there. American progress was slow on the mainland until the introduction of the new T-51 power armor suits, which came in 2076, while China was still fighting a losing war in Alaska. 
T-51 power armor was deployed in Alaska just prior to the invasion of the Chinese mainland and was decisive in rooting out the last Chinese elements, securing an American victory in Alaska in January 2077, thus putting an end to the 11-year-long conflict in Alaska. China was on the defensive with the whole weight of the American military focused on its mainland, but still it resisted fiercely all the way up to October 23rd, 2077 when the Great War ended the world as it once was. The Xi are the most well-known Chinese faction in the game, only appearing in Fallout 2 except for a mention in Fallout 4. The group's descendants came from a Chinese nuclear submarine, the Xi Huangti, which was beached outside of San Francisco shortly after the Great War. The crew members came ashore and made a home in the ruins of San Francisco, deciding to settle in the old Chinatown. They stripped their submarine for parts, creating the Emperor from the submarine's central computer system and no doubt integrating with some wasteland survivors in order to build up their society. This isn't a video dedicated to this faction, but suffice it to say that they saw it fit to model their society and hierarchy after ancient Chinese history and customs, which may have to do with the fact that they decided to shun the system of government they were familiar with. There are also several places in China mentioned by name, including Nanjing, where there is a Future Weapons Today magazine that mentions an article where a Watts 2000 laser rifle was used by a marine sniper there, as well as the combat armor that Randall Clark from the Honest Hearts DLC had, which came from a soldier named R.B. Vickers who fought in China. On the back of the helmet is written Nanjing and the months he served there as well as Shanghai which is fairly close to Nanjing. Shanghai is presumably the location of the invasion of China and was successfully taken by US forces. Shantou is a coastal city south of Shanghai and Nanjing where an article in the Boston Bugle mentioned American forces fighting China as part of their mainland invasion. This would imply that there were multiple invasion sites, although it is interesting that Shantou was chosen as it is so far from Shanghai. The province of Shanxi is mentioned in the location where the stealth submarine fleet was developed and possibly constructed. Although, since it is a landlocked province, the submarines would have needed to be transported to the coast. Lastly, several throwaway mentions of the Great Wall of China are made, like in Operation Anchorage. Gunnery Sergeant Benjamin Montgomery threatens to push China back to its Great Wall, as well as characters in Fallout Shelter mentioning they would like to see the Great Wall someday. The Terracotta Soldiers are mentioned in Fallout 76 in the Pioneer Scout Archaeological Exam, as are traditional Chinese beliefs of abused animals becoming demons in the Mammologist Exam. Due to China's central role in the lore of Fallout, we will no doubt learn much more in coming games, and if the cancelled Fallout Extreme had its way, it would have taken place partially in China, which would have been very interesting. Australia only has a few mentions in the Fallout universe, almost all in Fallout 76. Australian termite beetles and marsupials are mentioned in the exams at the Pioneer Scout Camp, but again, these are just small indirect references. Similarly, a small reference in Fallout Shelter has an optional pet as an Australian Shepherd. Canada has the second most Fallout lore for countries outside the US, right behind China. Not a lot is known about Canadian society or government in the pre-war, but we do know that like many countries, their relationship with the United States deteriorated in the face of resource scarcity and the war with China. The US built a key oil pipeline from Alaska to the contiguous United States that, of course, had to run through Canada. The Fallout Bible mentions that an attempted sabotage of the pipeline was used as the impetus for invading and annexing Canada. The sabotage claim is pretty dubious as Canada's resources would greatly help the United States and their war effort and would make resupplying forces in Alaska much easier. The US conducted the annexation on June 3, 2072 and the pipeline would then be under constant guard due to its importance in the war effort. There was a prominent underground resistance in Canada and the dynamic between the occupying US forces and resistance fighters in Canada is best summed up in the Fallout 1 intro that shows a scene where a Canadian fighter is executed in the street, evoking images of Eddie Adams' photo of a Viet Cong captain being executed in the street during the Vietnam War. The intro video is even more off-putting because of the friendly wave the power armored soldiers give to the camera afterwards. There are several small references to Canada throughout all the games. In Fallout 3, someone in the pre-war had their car stolen and upon recovering the car, many items, including a Canadian flag, was found. Fallout 3 also has vault tech pamphlets that can be found, which encourage those that could not secure a spot in the vaults to try to go to newly annexed Canada in the event of a nuclear exchange. This may be because Canada was considered less of a target in such a war. 
In Fallout 2, Marge Labarge and Dave Handy give passing mentions in dialogue of having spent a bit of time in Canada, and given that they are humans in Fallout 2, this means they would have visited after the Great War occurred. In Fallout New Vegas, Cass will remark on Jean-Baptiste's name by saying that it sounds Canadian. Whether this is a joke about post-war people not having pre-war knowledge, or whether this is how they refer to Canadians in this region, I really don't know. Lastly, Sunset Sarsaparilla has a report that can be seen in-game that refers directly to sales in Canada, meaning that Sunset Sarsaparilla is popular there too. And you can see by looking at the charts that they sell more in Canada than they do in the US Southeast. Additionally, the survivalist rifle from the Honest Hearts DLC has stamping on the receiver that states that it was produced in the US territory of Ontario. So it seems the US was quick to use their shiny new toy to start churning out war-related goods. Fallout Tactics has some unusual random encounters that have to do with Canada. The first is called the Canadian Invasion Recreationists, and consists of a leader called Clarice and several other members. She commands the recreationists to gather on one side of a large line that is termed the American side, with the large line representing the border between the US and Canada, and the opposite side being Canada. On her command, they all cross the line over to the Canadian side and then cheer, drink, and party. This rather silly random encounter also has Clarice state that there is strong evidence that the Canadian army wore pink, which, if true, would be pretty fabulous. Lastly, there is another special encounter in Fallout Tactics that once again references Canada, but this one is a lot less lighthearted. A group of people will attack the player and their party, calling the player characters Canadian scum, and that they have invaded Canada once before and aren't afraid to do it again. They further imply that Canada started the Great War, which at first I thought was pretty absurd, but then I thought about how much passive aggressive rage must have built up after the annexation, and it all made sense. I am now on Team Canada for the question of who started the Great War. Lastly, Northern Canada would have been partly explored by the cancelled Fallout Extreme game. Egypt has a surprising number of quick references in the series, but there is no definitive lore as to the state of the country before or after the Great War, the culture or its leadership. Instead we get mentions like in Fallout 2. A character named The Great Ananias claims to have a number of great and marvelous things in his possession, one of which is a purported Egyptian mummy. The player character can actually expose that it is in fact not from Egypt, and it is not a mummy at all. It is a ghoul from Gecko, who has the habit of falling asleep in random places, who eventually ends up coming to and wandering off. Fallout 4 mentions Egypt a few times when interacting with the Cabot family. Egypt and other ancient civilizations are mentioned when speaking about Lorenzo Cabot's archaeological pursuits in the Middle East, and Lorenzo is mentioned to have used a team of Egyptian workers during his digs in the Rub el Khali. The comic series Mistress of Mystery details a story where the hero travels to Egypt twice, once to fight the so-called Unseen Seer. The Pioneer Scout exam mentions Egypt a few times, one mentioning that the scarab beetle was considered sacred to Egyptians, that cats were domesticated in Egypt, that the Rosetta Stone was found in Egypt, that ancient Egyptians wrote on papyrus, and mentioning the tomb of Tutankhamun. The last small throwaway reference made about Egypt is by Smiley the Vendor that references a pile of gold bullion he has that reminds him of the Pyramids of Giza. I guess it comes as no surprise that ancient Egypt would be referred to more often than the modern state of Egypt, but I'm sure Egyptians are used to it by now. Like many countries on this list, France succumbs to being largely reduced to stereotypes throughout the Fallout series. Fallout 2 and 3 mention three different wines that are well-known types of wine, or a variation of well-known wines that herald from France. This includes Chateau Montrose, Atomic Claret, and Chateau Lafayette. We do not know much information about France before or after the Great War, other than France was involved in the resource wars that pitted Europe against various Middle Eastern countries. Other small mentions are sprinkled throughout the other games. In Fallout 2, the Golden Globes porn studio is said to be working on a video that includes a French exchange student. They will probably have to settle for something a bit less exotic though. The perk Chachet La Femme in Fallout New Vegas is from a famous French idiom. Literally translated, it means search for the woman, but is part of a longer phrase that says if a man has a problem, search for the woman. In Fallout 4, a reference to the chess move the French defense is made, which is a real move that appears as such and was popularized in a match between English and French teams in 1834. In the Nuka World DLC, there is a shovel museum that purports to display a shovel carried by a French soldier to pick up Napoleon Horse's poop when he was on parades through the cities. 
The Appalachian Liberty Bell is one of 53 bells that were cast in France in 1950, and a radio advertisement in the game advertises a fictional bohemian art show that is to take place in France. There are multiple references to French and the French language, although it is not always clear if the people speaking are French themselves or what is probably more likely French Canadian. Regardless, I thought it would be worth mentioning the various callouts. In Fallout 3, a Claire of Little Lamplight and Margaret Primrose will tell the player Bon Appetit, as does Mortimer from the Ultralux in Fallout New Vegas. Andre Machad on the island of Far Harbor is found injured on a bed and the main player can help him get better. While he is on the bed and injured, he speaks French to himself. A random encounter in Fallout 76 where the player meets a Miss Nanny that tells children's stories will have the robot speak some French as well. Scout leader Jaggy in Fallout 76 mentions the French language and in Fallout Tactics the Mount Cheyenne facility has a bomb launch countdown in French. The Pioneer Scout exams mention a French diplomat in one question and another revolves around the element Francium which got its name from the country. Specific locations in France are mentioned with Dean Domino from Dead Money mentioning that he performed in Paris. The Eiffel Tower is mentioned among vault dwellers in Fallout Shelter as a place many would like to visit and Amiens is mentioned in the Fallout 76 intro where several places Americans have fought battles is mentioned referencing the Battle of Amiens in World War I. Curie is the most prominent character that speaks with a French accent in the series. She was a Miss Nanny robot that was programmed by a scientist in Vault 81 to have a personality and voice similar to someone he knew and loved named Liza. Curie would go on to carry on the research of the scientists after they passed away, and her scientific endeavors, paired with her French accent, made her name Curie very applicable. Among the few references to Germany, Fallout 1 mentions the internet's favorite person, Hitler, as well as Nazi Germany, and a picture of the Reichstag is shown in the intro. Certain guns in Fallout and Fallout 2 are specifically mentioned as being German designs, such as the PPK-12 Goss pistol, the Vindicator minigun, and the M72 Goss rifle. Fallout 76 mentions that the city of Helvetia was founded primarily by German immigrants in the 1800s, establishing the holiday of Fasnacht and is referenced many times in the game. Germany is also mentioned as an incorrect answer on a few Pioneer Scout exams. Germany would have been mentioned in Van Buren, as well as Fallout Brotherhood of Steel 2. Yeah, they were going to make another one. Someone saw the first one and was like, let's make another one of those. Josh Sawyer confirmed that the language of the Dead Horses is primarily Spanish, with a mix of German and Navajo as well. The city of Dusseldorf is mentioned in the Shovel Museum in Nuka World, where an actor used the prop in the movie The Ditch Diggers of Dusseldorf in some of the fight scenes. Kronach is another mentioned city where Dr. Stanislas Braun came from, who was the demented overseer of Vault 112 during the Tranquility Lane quest. No solid lore on the country itself except that its history up to and just after World War II appears to strongly mirror the real world. Much like Egypt, all the references to Greece are to the ancient civilization, so we don't have a great understanding of the country late in the Fallout timeline. McCready in Fallout 4, will mention the Trojan horse when deciding to side against the Brotherhood of Steel. One of the audio tour stations that are found throughout Appalachia mentions Poseidon, the god of the sea, earthquakes, and horses. These stations are usually found around landmarks and are meant to relay information to any visitors or tourists. Sophia Doguerre in Fallout 76 was a former USSA astronaut. We'll talk a bit about the mythical characters of Arachne and Athena from Greek mythology to the player. Once again, the Pioneer Scout exam mentions ancient Greece multiple times, including the invention of the ballista, being Greek in origin, the Bronze Age collapse, and subsequent dearth of Greek writings, and lastly mentions the Greek ruins of Willusa and Sicily. Of course, there is Poseidon energy that uses the name and imagery of the Greek god in almost every Fallout game, but that is about as far as the references go, so I hope you weren't hoping for a lot. There is not much mention of India, and what we do have are just a few references. It is interesting though because India and China are rivals due to their proximity and influence in Asia, and it seems like India could have been an important US ally to counter Chinese growth and influence. At any rate, in Fallout 2 on the oil rig, the Dataplex 2000 smart terminal is playing an Indian film, but the dialogue indicates that it is really boring. So it must not be a Bollywood film. In Fallout 76, a beverage called Hoppy Hunter IPA is an Indian pale ale and is commonly found throughout the game. India is mentioned at the Pioneer Scout exam as the wrong answer twice, one of which mentions the famous Taj Mahal. Lastly, the boomer flight suit that can be found or worn in Fallout New Vegas sports a patch that represents the China-Burma-India theater, which was the US's designation for the World War II fighting in, well, the China-India-Burma region. 
India was actually supposed to be mentioned in the long-abandoned Fallout film being planned by Interplay. Ireland is mentioned several times, mostly in Fallout 4, but it also gets some love from other Fallout games. In the first Fallout, there is Patrick the Celt who appears in the Singer Random Encounter. He is a friendly traveler that is descended from an Americanized Celtic family and works hard to keep his traditions alive. Collecting clothing, food, stories, songs, and histories as he travels, he will also sing the Celtic song Nagila Mabid, which will give the player character one to charisma. In Fallout 2, the character John L. Sullivan is a retired boxer of Irish descent that is found at the Golden Gecko Club at Klamath. He embodies an Irish stereotype, being a boxer, being constantly drunk, inviting people to have a drink with him, and using a lot of Irish verbiage like lad, lass, and a bunch of others. His character is based on the real boxer John L. Sullivan, of the same name, even said to have a mustache similar to the real world fighter, who was the first heavyweight champion of gloved boxing. John will even exclaim, and forgive me of murder please, Aaron Gobrach, which means Ireland forever. On the Luck bobblehead, it will show the Vault Boy holding a four-leaf clover in a reference to the luck of the Irish. Fallout 4 has many references to Ireland due to the influence of Irish immigrants in the city. This includes a location called Irish Pride Shipyard and the Shamrock Tap House. The flag of Ireland is represented in the four-leaf clover perk in Fallout 4 and the Shamrock Tap House logo. Old Longfellow will sing old Irish songs during his idol animations and the Eddie Winter holotapes mention Irish gangs operating in the Boston area. Eddie Winter sought to further Irish-Italian mob relations and even took a trip to Ireland in order to try and make it a reality. He mentioned the locations of Dublin, Galway Bay, Kilkenny, and Waterford in his tapes. Whiskey bottles in Fallout 4 are labeled as Irish whiskey and this brand that I will not pronounce is based in Ireland. Colin Moriarty in Fallout 3 is memorable because of what a freaking jerk he is, as well as his Irish accent. I'm afraid you've had the misfortune to catch me, well, out of me element. He is purported to have come to the US as a child with his father who acquired wealth securing trade routes to Megaton before dying in a raider attack. This would indicate that people have the capability to cross the Atlantic, and I think it's logical to conclude that either things are bad enough in Ireland for people to consider traveling to the US for better fortunes, or that they may see coming to the US as an opportunity due to the destruction the country suffered. Kate is a companion in Fallout 4 with an Irish accent as well, and is a strong fighting gal. Her background is not as clear as there's no mention of migration of her or her family, so it may be that her descendants came from Ireland and her family kept the accent alive. Italy has a few mentions as well throughout multiple games. Bringing up Eddie Winter again, Italy was mentioned in Fallout 4 when Eddie was trying to improve relations with the mob. Fallout Tactics has the Beretta 470 Silverhawk, which is of Italian origin. Fallout 76 has some pre-war Italian restaurants like Little Italy and Graviano's Italian Eatery. A funny small mention is that of the Watoga Shopping Plaza. Mr. Handys were programmed to refer to products by their Italian name to try to be fancy and boost sales. Sicily is directly mentioned by the Pioneer Scout exam, and Sicily made all the espresso machines that are found throughout Appalachia. Way to corner that market. The test also mentions Pompeii and Mount Vesuvius for reasons that should probably be obvious, as well as Mount Etna. The Fallout 76 Overseer also likens the effects of the scorched plague on humans as Vesuvius in reverse, as people will burn up from the inside out. I would have just called that the microwave effect. Fallout New Vegas also mentions the Rubicon after Kaisar mentions the historic tale of ancient Caesar crossing the famed river. The possible companion, Arcade Ganon, theorizes that Kaisar likely considered the Colorado River his own Rubicon, emphasizing the importance of the Battle of Hoover Dam. The most we know of pre-war Japan has to do with World War II, since Fallout's history and our history closely mirror each other up to World War II, with the United States dropping atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The invasion of Okinawa and Iwo Jima were also mentioned in in-game dialogue. The Lone Wanderer in Fallout 3's Mothership Zeta DLC can meet a samurai that according to the official Fallout 3 guide was abducted between 1568 and 1603. Fallout 76 mentions Japan a few times, stating that the Watoga marching band had planned a trip to Japan before the Great War ruined those plans. The Fallout 76 character Calvin Van Lowe, who is an avid cryptid enthusiast, Theorized that two missing girls may have been taken by kappas, which were Japanese mythological creatures that lure children to a watery death. Fallout 4 very notably features a Japanese-speaking Protectron in Diamond City that only seems to be able to repeat the same phrase that offers people noodles. 
we find out that the robot Takahashi is not from Japan. Rather, someone messed with his audio files, seemingly bugging him out and reducing him to his one line and only making noodles with mystery ingredients. In the earlier games that take place in the western United States, Japanese weapons like katanas are not uncommon to find in the wasteland. This may be due to the Yakuza gang that can be found in the wastes around New Reno in Fallout 2, who may be descendants of actual Yakuza members or some other group of Japanese people. The Pioneer Scout exam once again mentions Japan as two incorrect answers, one mention of Mount Fuji while also asking a question about the Japanese giant salamander. Tokyo is mentioned in a Golden Globes porn studio in Fallout 2 that features the name of a film called Tokyo Decadence. Hiroshima is mentioned several times in relation to the atomic bomb that was dropped there as well as a terminal in Fallout 3 Citadel, where a Brotherhood scribe surmised that Liberty Prime might be to the Enclave what the atomic bombs were to Japan. Fallout 76 intro mentions Okinawa as one of the great battlefields that Americans had fought on. Kenji Nakano is the father of Kasumi Nakano, who is the young woman who ventures out to Far Harbor in Fallout 4 because she thinks she might be a synth. Although we have no information on Kenji's background, his first and last name are both Japanese, as is the name of his father, Taichi Nakano. There's no real accent or other indication that Kenji's recent descendants came from Japan, but considering how much transoceanic travel there has been post-war, it's not out of the realm of possibility, even though I do think it is more likely that his family lived in the United States before the Great War. The United States' other neighbor, Mexico, similarly has a fair bit of lore due to its proximity to the US. Prior to the Great War, we know that Mexico had a great deal of crime, and according to the Fallout Bible, the United States used Mexico's lawlessness and rampant pollution as a pretext to invade and control the country's resources, securing their energy reserves. It is also suggested that the US may have fueled instability through economic sanctions on Mexico. The Bible mentions in 2042, a large earthquake destroyed much of Mexico City, which was rebuilt using Mr. Handy robots, which helped popularize the robot. Mexico City was confirmed to be hit by several nuclear strikes, reducing it to a radioactive ruin with looters running amok, who then went on to be the nucleus of future raider gangs. We also know from terminals on the Enclave oil rig that radioactive wastewater was being dumped and subsequently flowing down towards Mexico, causing more ecological damage and poisoning an untold number of people and animals. We also know that a gas company called Petrochico was widespread in both Mexico and the western US in locations in Mexico such as Hidalgo, Puebla, and Veracruz. There was also a tabloid called El Periodizo de las Aburridas that was a gossip tabloid that did a piece on Robert House. Some mentions of Mexico throughout the series include a replica Neolithic shovel from everyone's favorite shovel museum in Nuka World that was made in Mexico. The unique rifle, Paciencia, is shown with a Mexican flag wrapped around the stock as a cheek rest. A New Vegas companion, known as Raul Tejeda, is Mexican and lived in pre-war Mexico before being ghoulified. He lived in Hidalgo and recounts to the player that due to being farther away from Mexico City, his hometown was largely spared. There was an influx of refugees from the city though, and his family tried to take in as many as they could before having to start to turn people away. Desperation turned to violence and Raul lost most of his family as well as his home, deciding to seek help in Mexico City, which was as we mentioned, a giant ruin. While this is not a deep dive into the character himself, his experiences as he traveled through Mexico into the US speaks of gunslingers and desperados, similar to Old West tropes, which gives an idea for the state of things in Mexico after the Great War. Mongolia might seem like a slight surprise on this list, and although there are a few mentions, there are not all that many. Rather unsurprisingly, these mentions are in the context of Genghis Khan and his horde. The Khans, the raider group, emerged from Vault 15 and based their culture on the Mongol Empire and Genghis Khan, emphasizing strength above all else. Of course, a big inspiration as seen in many visuals is the real-life biker game called The Mongols. In Fallout New Vegas, Papa Khan can ask the player to find something that can help guide the Great Khans once he is gone, and the player can present him with a history book of the Mongol Empire, with the amazing name Pretty Pretty Horsies, A History of the Mongol Empire. That is just superb. Fallout 76 Pioneer Scout Exam mentions Mongolia twice, mentioning that Genghis Khan's tomb has never been found, and that the Trans-Siberian Railroad passes through a portion of Mongolia. Lastly, Mongolia would have featured a bit in the cancelled Fallout Extreme game that would have also taken the player to China. In Mongolia, there was supposed to be a raider faction called the Huns, indicating that a similar breakdown of society occurred there, either due to direct nuclear devastation or just world-scale societal collapse. Norway has a small entry here as Fallout 4 is the only game to mention the wonderful country. 
the wreck of a Norwegian ship known as the FMS North Star is found just outside of Boston and was crewed by a group of Norwegian sailors. The crew appears to have been ghoulified after having their ship irretrievably beached and they stayed on their ship all these years, defending it and no doubt also raiding where they can since they are a hostile raider group and everything. The crew will still speak in Norwegian, lines such as Laos very frel, meaning leave us alone, and Jeg kommer hjem, when they die, meaning I come home. There are a few grammar errors in some of their dialogue, but maybe we can chalk that up to several hundred year old radiation rotted brains. Russia slash the Soviet Union is mentioned several times in the games, even though China has surpassed them in regards to their hostility towards the US and the threat that they pose. One of the great questions that has yet to be answered is how much of the real world Cold War history between the USSR and the United States also occurred in the Fallout universe. In Fallout 3's Museum of Technology, there is a placard that states that the US credits its own astronaut, Carl Bell, as the first human in space which the USSR contests. This occurred on May 5th, 1961, which was the same date that the United States sent its first man into space in the real world whose name was Alan Shepard. So in the Fallout universe, the same event happened on the same day, just with different people and a different end result as Carl Bell ended up dying when his craft crashed. There's a good chance that the space race was happening at a similar pace as our world, meaning that the USSR's claim that they were first in space was probably valid, although we can't say for sure. According to in-game newspaper front pages that can be seen in Fallout 3 loading screens, Russia is the name they used on the map of Alaska at the time that the Chinese were pushed out of Alaska. Since this occurred in January of 2077, the question is, did the USSR collapse at some point and become Russia? Fallout 1 mentions the Soviet embassy in Los Angeles because the daughter of the ambassador named Natalia Dubrovsky was granted asylum in Vault 13. In Fallout 4, during the resource wars, scientists used PAM to simulate an attack from China and the USSR, which was recorded as taking place in 2067. These events seem to indicate that the inclusion of the name Russia was erroneous. Another piece of evidence that the USSR existed up until the time of the Great War is a character in Fallout 76 named Lev, who had come from the USSR not long before the Great War to the US to engage in illicit acts since he had lived his life in the USSR as a mobster. So while we can't definitively say whether or not the USSR collapsed before the Great War, I think it is more probable that the USSR existed up until the time of the Great War because there are more mentions of the USSR as opposed to Russia. With that said, in Fallout 4, there was a Russian assassin that assisted Eddie Winter in taking out targets named Alexander Strelnikov, who was apparently very good at what he did. The AK-47 featured in Fallout Tactics talks about its origins as an effective Soviet assault rifle. The Fallout 3 official game guide has a small reference to the ghoul Michael Masters, who, in his pre-war and pre-ghoul days, spent time doing unethical biological experiments in an attempt to keep pace with Chinese and Russian, not Soviet in this case, doctors. So to answer the question about whether the USSR collapsed in the Fallout timeline, the plot seems to thicken. R. Scott Campbell was a creator of the first Fallout and he credits the decision to go with China as Fallout's big bad rather than the Soviet Union because of an experience he had. While on the phone with a Russian developer in Moscow, he heard gunshots in the background. When he asked what the sounds were, the developer rather nonchalantly explained that it was the Russian mob firing shots in the street. Campbell decided that the Soviet Union might not be as much of a future threat and instead decided to use the new, up-and-coming, bad communist boy, China. A Russian Mr. Handy was cut from Fallout 76 that would have had the player go through a secret agent training course, with the robot proudly exclaiming, for Mother Russia. The cancelled Fallout Extreme would have also featured Russia in the game at some point. See this bar? I killed a man for it. <laughs> no, no, I kid, I kid. <laughs> He is dead, though. <laughs> now, let me know when you're ready to order. Vadim and Yefim Bobrov, who run the dugout in in Fallout 4, have heavy Slavic accents, and while we don't know their backstory or where exactly they are from, there's a good chance that if the Soviet Union had existed up until the Great War, they would have come from a country that would have been considered a part of the USSR. Unfortunately, we don't know if they had recently come to Boston or had grown up in the Commonwealth and inherited their accents from their parents or community of immigrants. Spain only gets a few small mentions, starting with the first Fallout and the Spanish Empire, being mentioned in the intro. Dean Domino also visited Madrid in the pre-war where he had some sort of intense and traumatic experience that he doesn't elaborate on. The Pioneer Scout exam also mentions the Pillars of Hercules, which are the points of Jebel Musa in Morocco and the Rock of Gibraltar, which is technically not Spain, but maybe that changed in the Fallout world. 
It also mentioned that the countdown of the Cheyenne Mountain facility being destroyed can occur in Spanish, although this could just as easily implicate any of the Spanish-speaking countries and not just Spain. Turkey also gets a few small references with the Aldersea Day Spa on Far Harbor offering a Turkish spa. Troy and Walusa are mentioned in the Pioneer Scout exams, both being located in modern-day Turkey. Lastly, a cat breed called the Turkish Van is available as a pet in Fallout Shelter. Unfortunately, that is all we get from such an interesting country. There are several references to the United Kingdom throughout all of the Fallout games. There is not any mention of what the country was like before or after the Great War, but we can infer a few things from characters in Fallout. Fallout 1 uses a picture of London in its intro, and in Fallout 2 there is a special encounter called Sacred Head of the Vault Dweller that mentions Stonehenge. Fallout 3 has a good number of references given the focus on early US history and, well, you know, England was kind of involved in that. Mentions include references to the Battle of Lexington and Concord, King George III being the ruler at the time of the Declaration of Independence, and the Button Gwinnett Protectron rails against British tyranny at almost every chance he gets. The butler Mr. Handys that can be found in various places in the Capital Wasteland all have English accents. How may I serve you, master? Invoking images of high-class British butlers, which was likely meant to make them seem more professional or competent. Point Lookout mentions the Ark and Dove Cathedral, which were named after two English ships that landed near the area in 1634 that led to the founding of Maryland. The National Archives also has a copy of the Magna Carta that is mentioned in-game. Fallout 4 mentions the UK several times, including at the Museum of Freedom Museum Tour and the Freedom Trail Tour Bot in downtown Boston, as well as giving historical context. The venerated Shovel Museum in Nuka World mentions the British shovel fighters of World War I, and like in Fallout 3, almost all of the service Mr. Handys have some sort of British accent. This is taken to the next level with Whitechapel Charlie, whose name references an area of London that has a higher proportion of Cockney accents that Charlie also has. That is Magnolia, flower of the third rail. Anything you want to know about her other than that is her business. He also sports a bowler hat and has a Union Jack stamped on his chassis, which is very interesting and sets him apart. It is difficult to know if this is all for show and someone programmed him and dressed him like this, or if he may actually come from England himself. Fallout 76 has a few small mentions, including in the ever so amazing Pioneer Scout exam where British songwriters are mentioned. Johnny Weston is a character in Fallout 76 that joined a raider group, but prior to the war was an aspiring actor. We know he traveled in his youth due to being in a military family, and he mentions maybe having grown up in several locations, one of which was England. In an effort to gain access to a slaver area in Watoga, he will impersonate an Englishman by the name of Reginald P. Humphreys, who was unable to return back to England before the Great War. Fallout Tactics mentions the UK a few times, where a recruitable character named Sharon is described as having descendants that came from Essex, England. Another uh, dashing recruit in Fallout Tactics is Martin, who mentions having a descendant that owned a software company that went bankrupt in England. The game also features exact copies of well-known British-made guns, the Sten, and the Bren. We also know of several characters with English accents, and even some that were confirmed to have come directly from England post-war. The premier example is Alastair Tenpenny, who was a rich voyeuristic old man who came to the US for adventure and prosperity, which may imply that England's post-war state is exceptionally poor, or it is seen as an opportunity for people to come and scoop up a bunch of land and get rich, similar to the immigration rush in American Dream of ages past. Dean Domino is a ghoul who lived through the Great War, and was an English entertainer and lounge singer that toured through Europe and the US, before landing at the Sierra Madre before the bombs fell. The father of the protagonist in Fallout 3, James, sports an English accent himself, although this is never directly addressed and his past is left mysterious. The lieutenant in Fallout 1 is another character with a British accent, although once again we are not given any information to his backstory why he has his accent, and what those implications could mean. Fallout has another character, Loxley, who is most likely just impersonating an English accent as he has taken up the character of Robin of Loxley or Robin Hood. At any rate, it is interesting to think about where he might have come across an English accent to impersonate in the first place, as it has been established that there are a number of characters that have such accents in the Fallout world. Desmond Lockhart of Fallout 3 is another ghoul that served in British intelligence before the Great War. He and many rivals saw the Great War as inevitable and took measures to try and ensure they would survive. He exposed himself to radiation and became a ghoul and carried on with the hunting games with his rivals decades after the Great War. His coming to the US most likely occurred after the Great War as part of these efforts to hunt down rivals and therefore we can't surmise much about the state of England from his character. 
McRae is a character in Fallout 2 that stands guard outside the Blade's main base and teaches people hand-to-hand -hand combat. He is a self-proclaimed Scotsman and uses some common Scottish colloquialisms. Now we are at the mentions only section, which has a list of countries where very minimal references have been made to them. So this section will go a lot quicker. Austria is mentioned in Fallout Tactics in connection with the Steyr pre-war assault rifle where it was invented. The Bahamas are mentioned in Fallout 4 where Vivian O'Dell, the manager of the Boston branch of Hubris Comics, went on vacation in October of 2077, and she probably missed her flight back. Belgium is mentioned in Fallout Tactics in connection with the Browning High Power Pistol, whose design was finished in Belgium as well as the M249 saw. Czechia was mentioned in Fallout Tactics due to the 303 caliber Bren that was originally designed there. Ethiopia has a mention in Fallout 76, where the song In a Shanty in Old Shanty Town mentions Hale Selassie who was a rich ruler of the country, as was pointed out by DJ Julie over the radio. A recruit in Fallout Tactics is described as coming from a long line of beautiful blonde Finns whose family was famous for their delicious pastries and mobile phones, which doesn't sound like a stereotype at all. Greenland is mentioned in Fallout 4 where Deacon tells the sole survivor that he traveled by boat as far away as Greenland, which is probably a lie knowing him, but it also is seen on some loading screens that feature the headline, US to Annex Canada. Morocco has a brief mention in the Fallout 76 Pioneer Archaeology exams as well as a cut reference also in Fallout 76 where someone won a potato salad contest because of his Moroccan inspired potato salad. New Zealand is inferred as in New Vegas Melissa Lewis has a Kiwi accent although this was apparently not intended by the game designers and was the result of a miscommunication. Oman is mentioned in Fallout 4 as Lorenzo Cabot started his expedition in Salah to find the lost city of Ubar. He then traveled to Wadi Adem before continuing into the Rub al Khali, which could mean that he was either in Oman, Yemen, or Saudi Arabia when he finally found the lost city. Poland is mentioned at a terminal entry in Niponset Park in Fallout 4, where someone was trying to remember another man's name and all he could remember of his last name was something ski, and that it was Polish. There was also dialogue in Fallout 2 from a small character named Ryan in New Reno, who will proudly proclaim to people that his nickname is the Polish Hammer. Romania does not have a direct reference, but in Fallout 3, there is the Moresti metro station where the vampiric family takes refuge. Moresti is a real-world location in modern-day Romania, hence the connection to the family. I also had a brother who lived in Romania for two years, so that's my Romanian connection to my family. One of my favorite places in the world, Taiwan, was mentioned in Fallout 4 in a terminal entry where Pam was used to stabilize what became known as the Pascal situation in the Taiwan Strait. Tanzania gets a very small reference in Fallout 76 when it is offered as an incorrect answer on the entomologist exam. Venezuela is mentioned, as in Far Harbor there is a robo-brain in Vault 118 that houses the brain of Ezra Parker, who is a con artist. Ezra financed and managed the Cardoza Medical Research Center in Venezuela, although we have no other information on this facility or why Ezra built it in Venezuela. Vietnam has a brief mention in Fallout Tactics where the intro has a soundbite that the US has declared war on Vietnam, referring obviously to the Vietnam War and seemingly solidifying the event in Fallout history, although we can't know how different the war itself was from our world. And as a bonus, we have a cut mention of Cape Verde, where a terminal entry in Fallout 4 in Sanctuary had Nora, who could potentially be the sole survivor, mentions a man from Cape Verde that committed a crime but she thought he was innocent and was going to take his case on pro bono. Pat yourself on the back because you made it through the entire list. I'm sure that there are some references that I missed. In fact, I know there are. And if there's an interesting one, please let me know in the comments. But the video isn't done because I still have my comment highlights to go through. First off, I want to say thanks to everyone who had nice things to say and enjoyed my video with Radkid. It is certainly quite a different video, but I wanted to throw an extra one out there during the Christmas season. To all those that asked if I will ever do another one, maybe but it will be a similar situation where it is an extra little video in addition to my regular uploads. So let's get to these comments. A few of you let me know that there is a version of the MG42 that was designed to fire the 7.62mm round which corresponds to a 308, which is what the light machine gun in Fallout 76 fires, meaning that the light machine gun of the game is an MG3. It was also mentioned that the in-game files labeled the light machine gun as the MG42, and the Gaming Kaiser mentions the existence of the T24 machine gun project that attempted to reverse engineer the MG42 to use the 30-06 round that many US rifles used, although the project ended up being scrapped. There was speculation from several of you on why we see Nuka-Cola bottles and not really any cans in the wasteland. 
Some said that maybe the cans rusted or otherwise disintegrated over time, whereas the bottles were more resilient and therefore survived decades after the Great War. Others postulated that the bottles were simply more durable, so the companies opted for the bottles over the cans for that reason. Another comment, which I think makes a lot of sense, noted that it is common for countries in wartime to ration or limit the use of certain materials important to the war effort, and aluminum may have been one of those materials, meaning the companies opted for glass to aid the war effort. Many mentioned that the new Vegas light machine gun, that was a mishmash of M60 and M249 parts, does seem to have a physical piece from the M249, that being the sights, although that seems to be really the only physical carryover. A few of you corrected me that the Nuka Nuke Launcher mod takes up the Merv mod slot, meaning that you cannot stack the two, but you can still add the mods to the big boy to take advantage of effect stacking there. Buggy124 made a good point stating that the shoulder mounted machine gun is likely the most realistic way a one man portable and usable minigun could be implemented, and I have to say, that makes sense. Also, here's your comment highlight Buggy, several of you made a good point that the Fat Man shares similarities with the British Piat launcher. I previously mentioned the Piat in the context of Fallout 4 and 76 missile launcher, since the trigger and pistol grip look identical to the launcher. And the Fat Man shares this same trigger, trigger guard, and grip. I do need to make a point here though, that I saw in multiple comments. According to Wikipedia, the Piat was not spring launched, but operated like a spigot mortar, which relies on an explosive charge. So it wouldn't operate similarly to the Fat Man in that regard. There were also comments that were not happy that I disagreed with the Davy Crockett connection. I will reiterate more clearly. The idea of a more mobile and lower yield tactical nuke to be used by ground forces on the battlefield is the only connection and therefore the Davy Crockett may have been used as inspiration in that regard. As far as how the weapon looks or how it operates, there are no similarities. So I think the connection between the Fat Man and the Davy Crockett is a bit overstated. Someone pointed to the concept art that showed it mounted on a tripod, which would certainly be more in line with the Davy Crockett, but the concept art also shows multiple drawings of a fat man that is on a conveyor type launcher made to look like a runway with a small Enola Gay modeled rocket that would propel the bomb forward. So I don't know how much stock to put in the concept art. Brit C was able to confirm to me that the meat cannon in Fallout Brotherhood of Steel does indeed have unlimited ammo. So if you're wanting a game-breaking gun after the very first level, you know how to get it. Thank you all. Take care of yourselves. And may Adam curse your enemies.